Hi there, Chris from Stone Age Gamer here, and welcome back to the Gratuitous Rainbow Spectrum. Now, I like Mario games. A lot of people like Mario games. Mario games are pretty great stuff. We got Super Mario Bros. Wonder coming out in just a couple of weeks, I think, by the time this video posts. I don't know, I'm very excited about it. But one thing I really love about Mario games, that they don't do that often, but man, when they do it, they do it well. It's competitive multiplayer. There are some really, really good, and I'm not talking about Mario sports games, I mean like the actual Mario platformers, when they do kind of competitive multiplayer things, sometimes they do those outstandingly well, and unfortunately, they just kind of disappear into the ether, or are swept under the rug, like just little mini extra features, instead of being the mainline main events, which I think some of these are good enough to deserve to be that. So, I think we should take a closer look at some missing multiplayer Mario action. It would be ridiculous to claim that there's a shortage of multiplayer Mario games in the world. Mario Party exists in many, many forms. Mario Kart is basically the biggest brand on the planet. Mario Sports games come and go multiple times per generation. And Super Smash Bros., well, that's a juggernaut. But those are Mario's spin-offs. What about multiplayer mayhem in actual Mario games? Not to sound too much like a crotchety old man, but back in my day, multiplayer Mario typically meant taking turns between lives and levels. Today, though, with the exception of Super Mario Odyssey, most new Mario games tend to come with some sort of multiplayer mode standard. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is still one of the best-selling video games of all time, and it introduced the world to playing 2D Mario adventure games with four players simultaneously. Was it great? Eh, sort of. It was kind of fun for a bit, but it ultimately devolved into the less fun kind of chaos, thanks to not being able to occupy the same space at the same time. And, depending on who you're playing with, the want to sabotage your friends at every turn was definitely something to contend with. Super Mario 3D World took the adventuring with friends thing a step further by letting four players run through a three-dimensional environment where everyone has plenty of floor space to occupy. A step in the right direction, but far from the perfect multiplayer Mario experience. The upcoming Super Mario Bros. Wonder looks like its multiplayer aspects are going to improve things even further, which is great to see. But outside of the mainline Mario adventuring aspect, Mario has historically been great at competitive multiplayer too. Where, you ask? Well, in a handful of unlikely places, all of which I feel in my heart of hearts should be packaged together and remade with modern platforms in mind. The first time Nintendo did multiplayer Mario right was actually back in 1983. The arcade game Mario Brothers was a beautifully fun multiplayer experience that encouraged competition as much as it did cooperation. If you work together, you can reach later levels way easier, but if you play competitively, you can get higher scores and bragging rights. It's a classic that still holds up today, and one that Nintendo has revisited more than once. They included an updated version of it as a multiplayer minigame in Super Mario Bros. 3, but one could argue that they perfected this formula in 2001's Super Mario Advance. In that game, as long as you had the cables and consoles required, you could play with up to four players, which makes for some truly delightful chaos. They accommodated the extra players by extending the stage's vertical layout a bit and adding a second POW block. They also added Super Mario Bros. 2's control scheme and physics, meaning that not only could Mario control his mid-air movement now, but he could also pick up and throw things like the aforementioned POW block. You could also pick up your friends and toss them at enemies too, which is a devious delight. This game in all its four-player glory is a thing to behold, and an amazingly fun time with the right crowd. Its only real limitations are the ones imposed on it by the system it was created for, the Game Boy Advance. A larger screen to allow more breathing room for the characters would be most welcome, as would an audio-visual upgrade. It's not exactly ugly, but the scratchy sound of the Game Boy Advance leaves a lot to be desired. It's also pretty limited in terms of character selection. Here, you simply choose between four different colored Marios instead of the now standard Mario, Luigi, Toad, Peach, Peachette, whatever you want to call them. Additions such as being able to play as different characters, especially if they went all out and added different attributes for everyone, and adding stuff like new enemies and even power-ups could make this an absolutely killer online competitive game. It could work in couch co-op too, but one of the great things about this version over the older ones is not being able to see where your opponents are at all times, which isn't really something you can properly accomplish in split screen. Regardless, it's a proven, timeless type of Mario game, and it should really get a chance to shine on its own someday. Now, Super Mario Advance is currently available with online play as a part of Nintendo Switch Online, but it's one of those sort of buried experiences that not everybody knows about. 
It's also just the same Game Boy Advance game, and the issues that already exist with it are still present here, minus online play. Which is kinda great. But before Super Mario Advance updated the original Mario Brothers, an upgraded version of Super Mario Brothers hit the Game Boy Color in the form of Super Mario Brothers Deluxe. This was the first time the original Super Mario Brothers had been made portable, and it was a thing of beauty. They put a ton of effort into the game, even going so far as to add slight visual touches like animating lava and water and an overworld map screen. The biggest addition, though, was multiplayer. This mode could technically be played solo via Boo Races, but if you really wanted to know what Super Mario Bros. Deluxe was all about, you needed a link cable and a friend with their own Game Boy Color and a copy of the game. This versus mode was all about racing to the finish against a friend through completely unique levels designed just for this game that also featured brand new elements like color changing outline blocks you could switch on and off to mess with your opponent. This isn't exactly a complicated game, but holy heck is it fun. It's also something that an absurdly small number of people have actually properly played. This mode did get a welcome spotlight put on it during the 2017 Nintendo World Championships, where it made a surprise appearance as one of the games people had to play to win. But even then, it's not like there was an easily accessible way to play it with friends, which still stands true today. Once again, this game was also limited by its platform, especially in terms of screen size. The Game Boy Color's screen was pitifully small, and the available real estate, especially when displaying what's effectively an NES game, made things pretty tough. Take away those limitations, and you have one heck of a great multiplayer Mario on your hands. But what's perhaps the best, in my opinion at least, multiplayer Mario game ever conceived came as a mode in New Super Mario Bros. for Nintendo DS. This game includes the same set of minigames that came packed in with Super Mario 64 DS, but its unique versus mode was the real star of the show. In it, each player comes out of a pipe and has to start running through a 2D Mario level. The stage loops infinitely, so there's no race to the finish or anything like that. Instead, the goal is to collect stars that appear somewhere in the stage at random intervals. The first player to collect enough stars wins, but keeping the stars you've collected is the hard part. Mario and Luigi are also presented with multiple respawning power-ups throughout the game. Hit someone with a fireball, they lose a star, which then bounces around for either them to recollect or for you to steal. Do a butt stomp on the other player's head, two stars pop out. Get a Mega Mushroom and you can easily crush your opponent and steal all their stars. The stages are big enough for you to stay away from one another sometimes, but they're also small enough that it's nearly impossible to actually stay hidden for long. Let me tell you, matches in this game can get vicious and absolutely epic. My proposal is this. Take all three of these wonderful concepts, make them all four-player, remaster them with modern visuals and aspect ratios, and release them as some sort of Mario Olympics game. These concepts are so good that having them limited to mere modes and other games that people don't often give any sort of attention is a crime. That the Switch has become a bastion for great local multiplayer affairs, and these games haven't found their way to a more easily accessible form is beyond me. But there's always hope, right? Well, there you have it. Those are the multiplayer Mario games that I think deserve to be remade and repackaged into a singular Super Mario Olympics battle style game. They're just such fun multiplayer games. The fact that they're these hidden features in existing games, I think is such a disservice to how good those actually are. So uh, that's all from me. If you like what you saw here today, please follow, comment, like, subscribe, share it around, and let me know down in the comments, uh, have you played these before? Would you buy a multiplayer Mario extravaganza that has these kinds of games upscaled and uh, high definition eyes, which I just made up that word, uh, so that you can play them all in the modern day nice and easily and really put a real focus on those games, which are super fun, uh, so more people can experience them. What do you think? I want to hear from everybody. Thanks again for watching. On behalf of all of us here at Stone Age Gamer, keep playing games.
just got me.